Thank you very much. Hello, everybody. I'm Mark McLean, and I'm glad you're here because it's time for the shave of the day. Of course, yeah, shave of the day. And I want you to join me someday. If you can't today, that's fine. This is sort of the spur of the moment thing. If you want to join me, though, put it on pause. Go get your shaving gear, and we'll just shave together, okay? <laughs> yeah, more than likely, you're going to find out that I'm in a rush again. Seemingly, I always am. Another doctor's appointment? No. Two. <laughs> one for me and one for my wife. Same time. Well, 15 minutes apart. Same doctor, let me say. And uh, we're going to be shaving today with some feather blades. I love my feather blades. These are, these are my favorites. Everybody has their pick, their choice. And uh, it's between these and, and the sharks. And I like the Gillette seven o'clocks <laughs> and the light, the silver blues and the, I mean, man, it just goes on. I mean, he's got so many favorites, you know. What am I carrying as my EDC for today? You got it. Oh, failure. There you go. <laughs> Spider Co. There's the insignia. Paramilitary two. Yes, in the orange G10. Um, Gavin is my buddy and uh, Gavin Redding and I did some trading not long ago, and I'm loving the trade. He is too, and that's what trading knives is all about. Usually, I, I give a person 24 hours. I call it a trader's remorse clause that if they're not happy in 24 hours, then we just trade back. No questions asked. But no, not this time. We are both happy campers, and that's usually the way it goes. I like it that way. Uh, I've told you before about this paramilitary too. The thing is that I, I had several. Actually, this is number six, the sixth one for me. And uh, the reason that I got rid of them was because someone always wanted it more <laughs> than I, I guess, because they had something they would trade me that would be so much of a good trade I couldn't couldn't turn it down. So C, it's got C P M, I believe, yeah, S thirty five V N C P M S thirty five V N. Crucible Particles Metallurgy is what CPM stands for. And it's an awesome, awesome knife. I've already got the pre-shave on. Today I'm using Beaver Wood Rights. And this is just pre-shave oil from Beaver Wood Rights. The scent is really nice. It smells good. Uh, as far as the razor, it's the Gillette Gold Ball in Tech. Yeah, this is uh, one of their this is one of the pre-war uh razors they actually called it a, a pre-war tech in some instances but made in the usa of course it's a it's a great razor this is the comb through style see the teeth there and the reason i like to use the comb through style is because if i haven't trade or trimmed my beard in a while then it's much easier to to go ahead and use that because then i can sort of get into the the beard lines that i need to go into and do some trimming if need be Okay. All right. Now this blade came out of my second use pile. This is the second use for this blade. The feathers and uh, I don't recall the others. There's a, only a couple others that I will, I will do that. I will use twice. I mean, I know I could get more shaves out of them, but you know, as inexpensive as they are, and I look at what I used to pay for those quad razors with the four blades and five blades and I shake my head and I say I was crazy so when you can get uh about 50 of these for f around uh, five dollars you know or less then you're doing pretty good so I I just usually toss them out all right 
My shape's up today is from the Captain. Captain Hunters, Sense of the Seven Seas. This is my Mutiny Bay Rum. Uh, I like this. This is going to give me some energy today. You might recognize those little florets that are piped inside. Yes, from my buddy Monica Gillum. Yes, indeed. Sweet lady from Van Ule Soap of the Gods. I commissioned Monica Gillum to take my aftershave splash. <laughs> and to incorporate it into the shave soap and she whipped it up for me. Isn't that sweet? Nice lady. And that's what I'll be using today. Okay, the brush I'm using is called the Hulk from Razor Rock. <laughs> Look at that sucker. Man, isn't that wicked? I just love it. It's a, one of my favorites. Got a 34 millimeter knot and we're ready to go. <clears throat> this week I've been Oh, just returning, of course, we got back from Arkansas, um, Hot Springs, where my uncle and my aunt live. And we had a great time visiting with them a week, approximately, and uh, we always do. We ended up going crystal digging, and uh, this time we went to Wagner's Crystal Mines in Mount Ida. Uh, I wrapped this one earlier this morning, and uh, I got it ready to be uh, put on a necklace on a chain. That's what it looks like. Let me get that a little closer there. This one is actually called a scepter. If you know anything about crystals, it looks like a scepter. This part's smaller and the top part goes up. Both ends are points. That's awesome. And best of all, uh, you can't see it I'm sure, but right inside there, there's a bubble. A bubble inside the crystal floating around. Isn't that wild? Sealed who knows how many years ago. All right, let's get to going with the shave soap. And uh, first, I've already wet the bristles, as you can probably tell. And I'm going to just immerse it inside the soap and just whip it around a few times just to coat the tips, just to load the brush, as they say. Okay, I've got... Okay, it's five minutes till nine, and my uh, wife's appointment is at 9.45. So uh, we still have plenty of time for the shave, but I can't, I can't sit around and, and waste time. So I'm gonna have to really get to hurrying on this one. <coughs> Excuse me, folks. I have uh, a little bit of cough congested this morning. <clears throat> oh, I've been doing my leather crafting too, by the way. Don't want to get this all wet. Nasty. I <laughs> almost did though. Um, I produced this this sheath for this knife a couple of weeks ago. Now it's the lines are off. I didn't have any tools. The only thing I had was the punch that you make the holes with. And I bought that. I traced the idea off my brain <laughs> onto paper, onto uh, from paper to transfer it to cardboard. And uh then the cardboard onto leather. So that is a, uh, a dagger style blade inside and a dagger shaped, uh, there you go, sheath. Well, I have since done some practicing and I got my tools in. So now this is the produced product from yesterday. And there you have it, basket weaving on it. Excuse me, this one is in uh, got some water right there. A much better condition. <laughs> I did it lots better on this one than I did on the uh, the other. And that's what happens when you have experience and and uh, you practice. You know, it takes takes time. It really does. So uh, just bear with me, and I'll I'll be picking it up. I know I will. Okay, I better get to stirring on this soap. I'm using this today. The little schooner you see on the front is the Old Spice ship. It's the ship Grand Turk from Salem, 1786. You know what? I don't think I'm, I'm gonna need to lather like that. I'm gonna just do it on my face. Oh, wow. That blade, I mean, that Grand Turk mug is nice, but it's so small. And I don't know why I chose this brush <laughs> or why I chose that particular little bitty mug. I mean, <laughs> I wanted to use it. That's why I like it. 
it was given to me by my buddy. <clears throat> and I, I appreciate every gift that I get. Wow. This thing, you can just splay it out across your cheek and it'll cover your entire face. <laughs> Almost comical, you know, to use such a big brush. Man. And it it's loaded. It's got a lot of a good quality soap in it. It is a fairly thirsty soap, so I do have some quite a bit of water going in there. I haven't spent any time on this whipping up the lather, so I'm just going lathering by on the directly on the face. And that's okay if that's what you like to do. Some people do it every time, and that's all right. Whatever turns you crank, or whatever you have time to do, really, because time constraints dictate whether uh, whether I shave with a certain razor. Sometimes I'd like to shave with my straight razors. Uh, lately, time constraints, I haven't had the time. <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, back, back about what I was talking uh, on a little while ago about the, the crystal and gem mines. My wife and I, we love going to that. In fact, uh, this was our third third mine that we'd gone to. And uh, Doug, and uh, anyway, there's plenty more to go to, <laughs> I'm sure. But uh, it seems like we've got a better haul from this particular dig than we have so far any of the others. Okay, we're going to do the downward pass right now. A little bit of a hurry today. We really can't waste a lot of time, I'm afraid. I was gonna say that, speaking of, what I was saying a little while ago about the diamond mines, the crystal mines, yeah, I did score a, a beautiful diamond. It's called the Champagne Diamond. My wife, she got two smaller diamonds that were valued at around $200. Um, mine is valued at over that amount. I haven't had it appraised, but it's definitely over, well over $200. The way that works, <clears throat> they don't uh, usually dig diamonds at this mine where we're, we're talking about the last one. The first one we went to is at the uh, Hot Springs National Park Diamond Crater Mine. It's just a big diamond crater and we didn't do too well the first dig, but the second dig we went to, to Coleman's and uh, got a lot of good crystals. Now, the last one that I mentioned earlier, Wegner's, we really did well, but they don't, you don't find diamonds there. Now, the only way you do find diamonds there is If you um, you pay for the all day package, <clears throat> excuse me, which we did, then they give you uh, two bags that you can go through the sluice and cleanse out uh, your your stones, and then they give you this bag you can go through uh, and run these through these their diamond room they have they give you a key to it it's got all the lights underneath lamp uh, surface and overhead lamps and 
plus you get a jeweler's loop, uh, just all kinds of things that, that come with it that you can go in and check your bags out to see if you had any, any diamonds in there. And you're saying, well, where did the diamonds come from? Well, it's like this. <clears throat> they ordered these. And I'm not sure how much they spent, but I'm sure it, whoops, my ball fell out. I gotta screw my balls in. <laughs> oh well. Anyway, I didn't even know it was loose. So, they order these diamonds that are from the Congo, and they, they get them and they're shipped in with these rocks. You get a free bag with, you pay for it, it's not free, but a bag with your package. And a key to the diamond room, and you get to go in there and, and look and see if you found any diamonds. <clears throat> well, you're guaranteed a half carat. You are guaranteed you will have, <coughs> excuse me, you're guaranteed you'll have a half carat diamond uh, or diamonds inside. Excuse me. So you're guaranteed a half carat and uh, you know you're going to find that. Then one in eight, one in eight will receive a diamond valued at $200 or more. My wife got the valued at $200 package and I got the or more, the champagne diamond is what it was called. And uh, I was really surprised and caught off guard. <laughs> She was too, and so were the people that run the place because they had actually never, never even seen one of those champagne diamonds before. <laughs> They'd never seen one before. So they, they were just as excited as we were and they, they said, let me look at it, can I see it? And it was, uh, it was a lot of fun. Uh, I'm thinking about taking mine and perhaps <clears throat> Getting it mounted onto a, an earring. Maybe getting my ear pierced again. It used to be years ago. Just to wear my diamond <clears throat> that I found. And uh, my wife, she's thinking about doing the same with her two diamonds. Making, you know, some diamond stud earrings. Good idea? I think so. Okay. You can tell I haven't, <laughs> I've tried to cram a lot in a short period of time. Well, I had to. Like I said, I'm usually in a hurry when I have a doctor's appointment. Gosh, man, I, I just dislike doctors. Not them in general, but going to them for checkups and stuff. I guess because of Primarily because I've had so much bad, bad luck in the past, you know. <clears throat> but that is it. <clears throat> I am finished. That was a, a really quick shave. Compared to some of the ones I've done in the past, they, that is. <sighs> Smells nice. I like that beer roll. Very spicy. Just wipe that off. <clears throat> the reason is I'm, of course, you're sure I could go ahead and and uh, splash on cold water. I don't see the need to do that because I've got what I need right here. I did nick myself right there, didn't I? I thought so. Well, good thing this won't burn. Captain Hunters, someone just said EDC, erectile dysfunction clause. <laughs> funny um as i was saying this stuff has so many different things that are good for your face and your skin that i don't really have to to worry ab about closing up the pores it should work as as it is 
And uh, on top of that, I don't even have to put on any post shave balm. In fact, I planned on using the Nivea Men for sensitive skin, but I, I'm not going to because there's enough different products inside here. I don't have to. <clears throat> I'm serious. Over 20 different ingredients inside, ranging from, oh, uh, should I even attempt to go on? <clears throat> there's no way I could say them all and, and remember it without leaving something out. But I will have uh, the ingredients down below for you guys to check out if you'd like to find out more about Cap Hunter's Sense of the Seven Seas Mutiny Bay Rum or Blimey, that's Bay Rum with Lime. Thank you guys for watching. I am ready now for the doctor. <laughs> the doctor of love is in the house. That's me, not him. Anyway, <laughs> I appreciate you guys being there once again. Thanks so much. Get out and get your shaves on. Pay it forward every chance you get. And love your brother and your sister, too. Woohoo! <laughs> Careful now. <laughs> Peace!